Good morning, everyone. Just making sure everybody is listening. I want to thank um, iCapital and, and other partners for uh, continuing to organize such platforms to convey financial sector actors and policymakers to discuss industrial, uh, industry trends and opportunities. This is the fourth time I gather, and it shows uh, consistency, uh, and this should be applauded. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I must say, I'm really pleased to be with you this morning. <clears throat> We all agree that this year's gathering is special for many reasons, but mainly because it's a pivotal time in Ethiopia, both politically and economically. I'm sure the discussions during these two days will be more stimulating and vital to the country's meaningful transformation. In line with the broad-based reforms Prime Minister Abiy is leading in the political and economic sphere, we have launched, as you all know, a focused three-year homegrown economic reform agenda to sustain our rapid growth and seize new growth opportunities. We are refocusing our development aspirations to ensure that our double-digit growth during the past decades is bolstered with quality and sustainability to improve the lives of all Ethiopians. The homegrown economic reform agenda serves as a blueprint for the immediate reform measures we must take to address the headwinds our economy is facing as well as seize new growth opportunities. The agenda, as uh, I'm sure many of you have followed keenly, identified interlinked challenges at the macro, sectoral, and, and the structural levels. The macroeconomic imbalances the country is facing are prioritized at the most detrimental to the well-being of our economy today and are afforded the highest priority in the reform agenda. The major macroeconomic imbalances, inflation, debt distress, and forex shortage forces us to focus our efforts on the financial sector reforms. The Ethiopian financial sector has indeed come a long way during the past decades. I'm sure you all, you all would agree with this. It's one of the sectors, if not the only one, where the private sector has blossomed to play its key role in the economy. Yet we know too well that we have much more to do to bring the sector up to the level of our peers and to meet international standards. We are now at a critical juncture to transform the economy and I'm confident that the current reforms will be a turning point for the financial sector as well. In the next three years, the reforms in the financial sector will be at the backbone of the economic reform agenda and will be critical to meet the country's aspiration. The sector suffers from capacity and regulatory deficiencies that we must correct today. The regulatory environment has been too focused on controlling rather than nurturing the sector. There is a large mismatch between the demand and supply of financial products. We are still doing banking, you know, the brick and, and mortal banking. But the economy needs much more. And also the system relies on high collateralization and is too risk averse to serve the needs of um, the growing private sector. We want the finance sector to finance the new source of growth. We want the financial sector that is dynamic and, and risk-taking to see new growth opportunities, like the startup economy, like the tourism sector, or sector-specific products for the agriculture, for the tourism sector, for the manufacturing. But I'm sure you all agree that we are far off uh, from that. In terms of financial inclusion as well, we are still only banking 35% of the bankable population and have left, have left behind 65% of the agrarian population in the rural areas. Financial repression and government interference have constrained the development and competitiveness of uh, the sector. Now, because of these constraints, the homegrown economic reform agenda recognizes all of the above mentioned challenges and the government is keen to work with the financial industry actors to build a financial sector that will support a vibrant private sector, create jobs 
and propel the country to a middle-income economy. As a primary step, we are looking to improve the capacity of the National Bank and overhaul the regulatory environment. The National Bank will upgrade the regulatory framework to international standards and focus on managing risks and assuring resilience in the financial sector. It will modernize the monetary policy framework and upgrade its institutional capacity and that of the sector, fitting of the middle income economy we aspire to build. We will also take measures to restructure the state-owned Commercial Bank of Ethiopia and Development Bank of Ethiopia to meet the industry's best practice and ensure that they operate on a level playing field with the private actors. We will also develop financial and capital markets to mobilize savings and improve access to finance. A competitive and well-functioning treasury bill market facilitating the development of interbank money markets, establishing secondary bond markets, and stock exchange markets will also be the priorities. We're also looking to develop a forex reform roadmap to guide our efforts to move towards a market determined exchange rate and eliminate forex shortages. Because of this reform, as we've been saying repeatedly, Forex shortage will not be a defining feature of the Ethiopian economy. I'm pleased to say that we've made some strides, uh, some strides in reforming the sector during the past few months. The government has been easing the closed economic sector and have opened up the financial sector for Ethiopian-born foreign citizens, as you know. Requirements of uh, the requirement for private banks to purchase bonds at 27 percent of loans extended has been lifted. We all know this is a huge milestone. This action demonstrates the government's seriousness on the reform agenda. The establishment of the primary debt market is already underway. We will probably have the first competitive uh, you know, treasury bill market today, I'm sure. Uh, the bankers have sent uh, their experts to trade at NB. And directives have been issued to enhance transparency on foreign exchange management and allocation, and other reforms will follow suit. Yet, in addition to improving the regulatory environment and facilitating the development of uh, the finance sector, the sector, as I said above, should also work to fully backstop the national development aspiration. In fact, the sector should lead uh, the reforms in the real sector. At the center of the economic reform efforts is the need to ensure that the economy's transition to private sector-led economy, and this primarily entails improving access to finance. Many of the above major reforms in the finance sector will improve access to finance. The private sector's access to finance has showed notable improvement over the, the last year after the reform. As you all know, private sector access to finance to increased from 22.5 percent to 34 percent in June 2019, at the end of last year. But if you look at the last uh, three months' data, total new credit extended to the economy during the first three months amounted to 47.1 billion which is a 44.3% increase from the previous year, same period previous year. And the private sector received a 2.7% of the total credits, whereas only 17.3% went to the public sector projects. This is phenomenal. The lifted NB bill requirement, which took place in the past weeks, we hope will have an even greater impact on improving access to finance in the coming months. Let me take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, some of the banks that have taken initiative to reduce interest rate. Uh, I hope other banks will follow suit. Um, I know, at least, and I'm not sure of the latest development, but an Aosh Bank and Ugagan Bank have, have started reducing interest rates. So I want to thank them publicly and encourage other banks uh, you know, to follow this example. If I've missed other banks that I've done yesterday or today, um, um, I'll, I'll take corrections. Another area we must work on is on adapting modern financial technologies to gain a competitive edge, improve financial inclusion, and serve the country's digital economy aspirations. 
Mobile technology and banking is very important to ensure financial inclusion. The liberalization and reforms in the telecom sector opens door to enable mobile banking to expand the banking of the unbanked 70% of our population. The financial industry thus must prepare to take advantage of the improvements in the telecom sector. The government is also launching a financial education strategy, which is expected to be launched this month. Our goal is to increase access to finance by the adult population to at least 60% in, in the near term. We must also be ready to finance ideas, innovation, and technology, and enable e-commerce. Ethiopia has a large youth population that is brimming with innovative ideas, and it's critical that the financial industry adapts to serve these needs. As you may have uh, followed, last week, the Prime Minister signed an MOU, um, in fact, signed by the Minister of Innovation and Technology, uh, in the presence of the Prime Minister, uh, with the Alibaba Group to launch the world's fifth electronic vaulted platform in Addis Ababa. And we also had a visit by another Jack, uh, who is the, the, the Twitter founder. Such flagship projects and high-level interest in Ethiopia requires that the financial industry steps up its game and adapts to electronic and technology-based banking systems. In 2018, um, Ethiopia has raised about 11.3 million in tech investment and was the seventh largest tech investment destination in Africa, with some 76% of the funding going to fintech. This is a very good indicator of the potential in fintech, and the banking sector has to take note of this development. In the medium and long term, we need a financial system that is able to, to backstop a middle-income economy and support regional integration and the globalization of our economy. The next three years, the government will focus on strengthening the regulatory environment and putting in place a domestic system that is able to compete on international standards. The industry actors must also gear up um, in building you know, the required human capital and technology so that our financial sector can compete internationally. One avenue where I think the bank sector can be strengthened is through mergers. Mergers, I believe, will boost the capital and uh, will boost capital and lower the risk profile of our banks, thereby allowing them to improve and diversify their services. We always talk about the opening of the sector uh, and worry about competition, but it's about time that the sector thinks of its strengths to compete regionally, to address uh, some of the, un the, unfil the unfulfilled demands uh, in the region. And, and we, we believe that we have a strong financial sector that can go beyond uh, Ethiopia's borders. In closing, let me reiterate that Ethiopia is on the march, and the financial sector must not only keep up, but lead the economic transformation. We have a rapidly growing population and the economy is expanding fast. Thus we must capitalize on the positive change in the country and challenge each other to step up our efforts. The banking community and policymakers must be attuned to new opportunities and work together to seize opportunities. The government is keen to work with all actors to deliver on our shared development aspirations for a prosperous and inclusive Ethiopia. Platforms such as the East Africa Finance Summit play a key role in facilitating the engagement of industry actors and policymakers to share ideas and knowledge. I would like to thank iCapital again and other, other partners for a superb organization of this platform and hope to engage with you on such platforms. I wish you a very fruitful deliberation in the coming days and look forward to engaging with you to build the economy we envision. With that, I declare uh, this forum open. Thank you.